Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hitbox TV's Hearts, Heroes of Cards Hearthstone Invitational. My name is Rapid. I'm joined here by Forsen. We'll be role-playing as your casters for today's games. And we've come down all the way to the grand finals. And it's $1,500 on the line for first place, $500 for second place. And after some incredible games, it's come down to RDU versus Masan. Now, RDU's already gone ahead and banned Warlock, not the Hunter, and consistently he hasn't banned a Hunter. He's been able to win against it in two deciding last games of the series. So we have Warlock and then Hunter banned from Masan. So we're gonna hop into the Grand Finals. It is a best of seven. We'll be loading into that here in just a minute. So we've got bands out of the way and it's going to be RDU starting out with his Shaman versus Masan's Druid. And this is the Strife Crow Druid, I believe... No, no it's not. No, this is uh, the one that was running... The, uh, no, he hasn't been running this. This is the deck that we haven't seen yet from Masan. Oh, that's right. Already used the one that's been running Str Strife Crow Druid. So yeah. this is um, a, a Druid deck with a lot of taunts in it. It could be the Kel'Thuzad version because he's drawn into what looks like a Handlock hand. It, but... from, from the looks of it, it looks like uh, the Druid that the Reynald was playing in... Uh... Hyperx Invitational with some oh, Furies and, yeah. and Ancient Butchers. Uh, I, I don't think this is a very strong Druid, um, but we'll see here what he has in his deck. You know, it's interesting. He does have that synergy, able to throw up a very early taunt wall, but that's like very strong defensively, and it lets you set up for other things, but uh, of course, he's not going to kill him early or anything like that. So he also will have the uh, the Archmage in his hand, so Thalnos for the, the swipe empowers. Which can be really, really good, especially against RDU, who's going to want to set up a lot of two health creatures. Yeah, so he's deciding to play the, uh, the Sun Fury here because of the reason uh, that he can actually clear totems and stuff with the two power. Um, but he plays in Horus Golem, and he can't really do much about that Horus Golem right now. Yeah, that Harvest Golem is really difficult. And this is, you know, the standard Druid that, or uh, standard Shaman that you're used to seeing. Uh, just puts down sticky minions, floods the board, and he doesn't have to worry about anything crazy like, you know, unleash combos like he would from Hunters. But he is in range for some bad swipes coming up uh, if he does. Uh, if he does play out into those, but he's got uh, a lot of options in hand. He even has the um, the Earth Shock for things like the Thalnos. Yeah, the Earthshock is probably going to be played here, I don't see any other play. And he, then he could either play the Horus Golem, or he could coin out an Argus here. Uh, but the uh, coin Argus is not really that great, because you can't get any value. You can't get through that 4-5, unless you use your Flame Tongue here. So it's yes. going to be interesting to see here. Yeah, he's going to go for, he's going to break through here. It doesn't really matter what he Lightning Bolts here, because he's going to trade anyway. Uh, so, he's going to trade a Spider into the 4-5, and that one is going to survive either way. Yeah, and I like that play because it keeps the Harvest Golem intact, so you've still got that Death Rattle out there. So there's still going to be something on the other side of the Flame Tongue, which means that if you do clear that first, then that's what you're going to have to deal with. But he's going to charge out a Druid of the Claw, kill the Flame Tongue, and that'll yeah. make that Harvest Golem a lot less scary. Really good play. You don't want to taunt up there because uh, both of the possibility of Hex and another Rock Biter or Lightning Bolt to trade with the Flame Tongue and Harvest Golem. So charging is definitely the right play here. And he picks up and Horus Golem, which is going to buff that, uh, that uh, dude that gets buffed by Death Rattle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Undertaker is going to take that yeah. one. Yeah. It's, it's not something that I've seen out of a lot of, um, I, I don't know, out of Max cards. It's, not, it's kind of situational, but when you can cram tons of Death Rattles into just about any deck now, uh, especially with the Sticky Shaman deck, this is... Uh, it's great card. It's already gotten buffed so far. He will be able to kill it this turn with a Druid of the Claw. But at the same time, uh, he has a Sludge Belcher to back it up, even though it's going to be damaged. So, um, yeah, I think you want to play the Sludge and you want to trade uh, the Undertaker with your 4-4 before he gets bigger. That's like top priority. But he's actually going to cycle here, which is really weird to me. Because now you can't protect your uh, Druid of the Claw. And it's not like you're really taking too much pressure off the board. The Harvest Golem is just going to return itself, and that means you're hero powering. And that does seem like a much weaker option because, I mean, the Watcher is not too much of a threat here. He has an Argus for next turn, but he won't be able to get value out of that unless he draws a cheap creature. Yeah, because uh, he needs to plan turns ahead here because he knows that he most likely will play the the Druid of the Lord, uh, the Ancient of Lore next turn, and then. It's not gonna get any value from that Ancient Watcher. So playing that preemptively like this is not really super good play here. It's just yeah, gonna sit on the board. 
totem. He does coin out a totem. Uh, he, like... wants, he wants he uh, wants an Argus target for next turn. Yeah, an Argus target. Um, the the one one totem, prob one of the worst totems you can get out there. It's not going to be super helpful. But he does. Uh, Masan does have still have that Sludge Belcher from last turn. But the the problem with that is that it wasn't a uh, lore turn. Like that's what yeah. he wanted to play there, but he needed to get that ton up. That uh, one one totem actually prevented him from playing lore uh, because you need to hear power that totem. If it's a one one, you need to use your hero power, and then you only have five more mana, and then you can only play the Sludge Belcher. So, if that was anything else, you could have played the Ancient of Lore. Yeah, so it's not like that was a bad turn, it's just that it wasn't the best turn that Masan could have gotten. Yeah. And he'll still have the Lore for this turn, uh, gonna be able to get some card draw off of that. Uh, and he'll draw into, let's see, Sludge Belcher and the Force. So he has the combo in hand right now, and with no healing from RDU's Shaman, this could get really scary. Yeah, and trading that into the Horus Golem was definitely the correct play because otherwise he can uh, play the Lothab right into the Sludge Belcher and get a lot of value. He, ha he has an Argus, so it's not gonna matter, but Masan didn't know that. So he this is, know is, he, is he gonna trade here? No, he's going straight for the Dome, which is really, really bad considering uh, he might have Black Knight in his hand. He needs to play around that, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know that Black Knights are going to be out there, especially for Druid decks. Uh, <laughs> Masan actually thanking him for that if he wants to go for it. And he does, so I don't think Masan's too worried about that. More taunts to come out from RDU, so at least he keeps himself safe from you know immediate death. But uh, with Kalthazad coming out, that oh my god, he's gonna yeah. he's just gonna ping with that. And then uh, I'm not sure if this is the correct play actually, you could have just Argus your 4-5 uh, and 5-5, uh, five, five, traded it into that and played a Sludge Pulcher with 3 attack to deal with all of his minions. Does he still go? I think he's, yeah, he still goes for the Sludge Pulcher, but it is a little bit off of yeah. what he was looking for. That was that was a mistake in my opinion. Um, could have played this turn a bit better, you could have saved that wrap for a rainier day. Yeah, it wasn't like Argus. he really needed card draw either. Like, yeah. Kind of confusing to just, not just Argus up there, but uh, now it's it's up to RDU. He drops the Drake, and he'll get spell power and, of course, that draw off of it. Uh, the totem is a healing totem, but I don't think that's going to save any of the cards he wants to trade here. Yeah, so this turn, uh, we're most likely going to see a combo, actually, to just clear the board here. Because Kel'Thuzad is not really that good here. You can't sacrifice your minion into anything. Yeah, Ooh, I guess... though, in a, another Angel of Lore, that's pretty big top deck, but... Uh, I mean, I would like to see the combo here, actually, just to clear everything. Yeah, and I think he's gonna go for that. And uh, does... he, can, he can transition into Angel of Lore next turn. So this is gonna be big for board clear. How does the combo work when you have Kel'Thuzad out? Does it bring the Trents back? can't play them. If you, ha if you already have Kel'Thuzad... Yeah, uh, if you already it, have it, it out. It, yeah, it brings them back, but they die uh, immediately, so they, they're not staying on the board. They're just dying. But they keep respawning over and over again. No, only one time. Only one oh, time. Oh, that's true. Okay, okay, okay. That's a little bit unfortunate. But, yeah. uh, you can, not really... There is some nice things you can do, though. Like, if you have a, a cool uh, Taskmaster and a Kel'Thuzad, you get to draw cards from that when they die twice. <laughs> oh my god. I hadn't thought about that one. That's pretty crazy. But I, I haven't really seen too many Kel'Thuzad combos. I think we've only seen and played once or twice this tournament so far. Yeah. Um, and that shouldn't be the play here either. Uh, even no, with he's that definitely going to go for um, card draw, I believe. If he would have had that Wrath uh, still, if he didn't waste it like that, uh, he could have dealt with that Fire Elemental. He can still deal with it, but then he has to take 6 damage to the face here. Uh, think about the Kel'Thuzad, sword, he still hasn't seen a single Hex, so he needs to be afraid of that. So I would play... Oh, he's healing actually. That's... Wow, okay, so he's Ooh. really afraid of something here. I mean, the the... the possibility of having lethal that turn that wasn't extremely high he he almost has to trade the um the fire elemental into that ancient yeah, watcher I mean, if he would have had that earth shock there and a rock biter that would have been 18 damage uh, that he could have done so he could have died there but he already used one earth shock so I, I think that's a risk you're willing to take and just draw more cards um, hmm. He did, however, pick up that Hex, which is really important now that Kel'Thuzad is going to come up most likely next turn. He's thinking about, yeah, he's going to Hex that right now because 
Uh, he, he's thinking that that's one of the biggest drop he, ha he has, but we know that he has Kelter Sun instead, so it's not actually that good right now, but it was, it's a good play, you know. And he still is able to clear the board, so he's got that control there, and against a Druid, you never have to worry about weapons, so um, the Harrison this turn is just, it's good to get another minion out on the board. You're not going to get any more value out of it than you would in that situation, so... Pulls up four minions on the board, and now it's up to Masan. He does have swipes, so he can take care of at least the um, the Harrison and the Fire Elementals. So that takes most of the damage off the board. But like you said, big Wind Fury combos are still something he has to worry about. Yeah, he was playing into swipe there pretty hard. His opponent had, hasn't used a single swipe, so he maybe could have taken that in consideration before playing the Harrison. Uh, but uh, you, you, you can never know for sure, so it's a good risk, maybe. And Masan was actually thinking about using the second swipe there at the end on the um, on the um, uh, Tinker, but didn't decide to do that. Uh, and I think that's obviously a better play. So uh, for this next turn, it depends on what he draws into, obviously. But if you're Masan, like, how are you? I mean, he was scared enough to heal a couple turns ago, but now yeah, that's this late in. This is, uh, I think you need to swipe that Flame Tongue before you play your Kelter Sword. You cannot uh, let that live. Um, and then you need to hero power. Um, yeah, he's gonna use the innovate at the top deck to be able to play that kill to as well this turn. Pretty good. Yeah, it's a good turn to get kill to out. There's not too many threats out there on the board, and even though the spirit wolves will come out, um, that's primarily, like I said, a defensive option. He does have that three damage from lightning, yeah. but that's so most likely later he's on. He's thinking here, uh, do I have better chances of winning if I wait for a Rockbiter, or do I need to kill this Kel'Thuzad right now? And he's thinking that he has two Rockbiters in, the, in his deck for the win next turn. Uh, if uh, Actually, if a wolf dies, he's... Like, yeah, he got exactly lethal if a wolf dies, but not with that taunt up. Okay, and now with the Argus used, that's a 7-7 seven, seven Kel'Thuzad out there. And I guess, I'm not sure why he damaged, I guess that yeah, was the best option there. Uh, it does armor up there at least, and even though the healing totem's going to heal. Oh my god, he just topped the Hex. That's that's huge, actually. Uh, that, it's not lethal this turn, because he doesn't have a rock biter, no, but, but Hexing that, it was so that important. just took away all the options for, that Masan had. Yeah. And uh, he's thinking about... Okay, think about lightning bolting that, and I think it's the correct play because otherwise he can trade with uh, hero power and that to kill a wolf, and it will survive. So just getting rid of that. Oh is my the best god! <laughs> and this is a horrible spot to be in for Masan. He only has those three. He's got Lotheb, but at the same time, it's it's gonna be a big taunt. But he, that's that's his entire hand. Yeah, but he knows that his opponent has no more hex. He has no cards in hand. How is he gonna deal with this Lotheb? He needs the Earth Shock here. And let's see what he top takes. Does still have one. Alakir! Alakir. Okay, that's actually gonna help him a lot. Alright, so he's definitely playing that Alakir. When he throws it down there, he's gotta get some wins on the side. And you're gonna six attack damage. once only though, because you wanna trade with the, the Wolf and the 2-4 and the, the to keep that Alakir alive. Mm-hmm. Or he's thinking about actually hitting it with his face. Whoa! That's... R RDU goes down to 5 health. But he does have 3 taunt minions up. It's fine, because uh, we know that... Uh, or he knows that uh, both swipes are gone. So there's actually no card that can kill him. Uh, oh no. Right Masan draws into Death Lord. Horrible, Definitely. horrible card when your opponent has a healing totem. Especially... Yeah, not, ag not against... Uh... Not against Shaman, so that Death Lord is definitely going to die. Definitely going to die, and that's going to give an extra monster out on the field. What's it going to be? Oh, it's a naked Argus. I guess that's not actually too bad, but against a full board, no way to clear it. Masan yeah, is out of options. Masan is just... I don't know. He's, he has no more options in his deck, I would assume. If it's not running Deathwing, but I do not think he's running Deathwing. So this is nope. kind of much over. That, uh, that Harvest Golem is not a Deathwing, and so Masan has to know he is pretty dead this turn. Um, yeah, he, he has Lethal you know, on board, so I don't know why he's not leaving here. It's uh, yeah, 6, it's... 8, 10, 11, 13 damage. Yeah, he's so. going to force RDU to realize that he has to attack with all of his minions to win the game. 
uh, which is probably not that difficult of a realization. Ending it with perfect lethal, RDU plays it late and does uh, kind of tense there for a while, but the hex of the taunted um, uh, Kel'Thuzad, and then he also hexed the, or no, he was able to trade out with the uh, the wins against uh, taunted Lotheb there at the end. So that is a game one win for RDU, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> His shaman deck's name is Huck Fandlock. So, apparently not a big fan. That's actually why he banned the uh, the Warlock instead of banning the Hunter. But that yeah. does mean that Masan is going to be able to use his Hunter, and that will be the class that he'll be pulling out here in game number two. So, Hunter, uh, kind of the big scary class nobody wants to play against, so it's been banned more times than I think any other deck this tournament, which is, I guess, fairly expected. But what's not expected is RDU leaving it up. And this is the Trap Arcane Golem variety. Oh, this is this is what actually what I was thinking about doing to tournaments, uh, bringing to tournaments, because if you're not, uh, if you're not a uh, very, very good Hunter player uh, and you haven't practiced it a lot, you can bring uh, Agro Hunter uh, just so it gets banned. Uh, and you can play your other classes because everyone is banning hunter everyone except rdu right now and if you bring a hunter uh and it you happen to play it like you happen to be able to play it because rdu doesn't ban it then at least you're playing something very very simple and uh, aggro with the hunter and not the mid-range one yeah a lot of people underestimate they think hey i pick hunter i play it and it's an easy win but there's a lot of finesse to it uh which is the reason why maybe a rdu hasn't been banning it quite so much because he doesn't consider um the players that he's playing against as good enough hunter players so yeah. turn one it's gonna be tracking here which one of these does he go for it yeah, obviously the the unleash. yeah yeah i mean against the shaman building up totems and uh sticky minions with the one one tokens like the spider yeah like, you want those unleash combos that's the way you win this matchup so definitely yeah definitely the unleash, the unleash. um he loses the um uh a couple of cards there with with leprinone coming out this is this is really weird, and he's gonna actually give away. Okay, he is coining out the animal companion, yeah. so he's not quite giving away what kind of hunter it is. No, uh, not yet. But uh, uh, this is kind of awkward though uh, for uh, for RDU with that hand. Um, he's gonna be able. I think he's gonna uh, lava burst that one. <laughs> Most likely, you don't want to use the hex because he still thinks like uh, he should have hexed. If he knows what kind of deck this is from Hassan, he would have hexed there. But uh, he still thinks this is mid-range, so he needs to yeah. save those hexes for Sun High Main. But the biggest creature that um, uh, Aggro Hunter will ever have is like a Misha, or maybe a Taunted Misha, or whatever. But yeah, and so now he sees the Lepronome come out, and he's like, "What? All right, it's Aggro Hunter!" And he yeah. immediately drops that Earth Shock, so Lepronome is no more. And at this point, all he has to do is, you know, put out enough stuff on the board that the aggro hunter never has the opportunity to hit his face, or he'll wind up losing those trades pretty hard. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really surprised by that flare, by the way, because in tournament settings, uh, you're allowed to ban hunter. Uh, so there is not, if you're gonna ban hunter every time, you don't really need those flares. Maybe he's afraid of mage, but uh, we'll see if he runs one or two flares. I'm gonna be really, really surprised if he runs two flares here. Well, so, and especially he's running flares and tracking, so that's a lot of dig for your deck. Yeah. Um, even just there. So, Eagle Horn Bow coming out, that's a good way to trade out versus that Taunt Totem if he wants to go for that. But he doesn't even have any traps in hand to empower that later on, so... That would be a little bit dead next turn. Yeah, I, th I think you just equip Bow and Hero Power here. Uh, you definitely don't flare, I think. That's not the correct play, because you want to use that... Uh, hero power every turn. Now it's super awkward because now we can't play that bow and hero power. Yeah, he loses the opportunity to get that free damage down, and uh, these are classes that don't have native healing in them. So when yeah. you chip chip away with that hero power, that actually matters a lot, especially for face hunter, where you're just desperate to get as much damage down early as you can. And he's actually gonna skip playing the bow to hero power and lose that two mana. Yeah, uh, it's definitely correct to hero power here before the bow, but the mistake was in that he flared, and that's really, really mana inefficient. If he didn't flare, he could equip that bow, and uh, not attack of course, because you want to wait for that buster and unleash for the totems, uh, but use the hero power as well. Oh, uh, and a now, second bow, that's yeah, really that bad. Is, that's pretty bad, that means that not only, and the bow would have traded very well against 
uh, the harvest golem earlier, but he's actually, wait, he's oh. not gonna, oh, okay, he unleashes the hounds, uses the hunter's mark, and he's gonna be able to, uh, to clear here if he decides to hit with the bow, but instead, like a good face hunter, just going straight to face, and he does have RDU down to 18 health. Yeah, he has double lightning storm in his hand right now, and that's really useless, considering he has used and unleash as well, so... But that Lothar pickup is actually huge. That is gonna prevent him from playing uh, kill commands and Hunter's Mark uh, efficiently. Yeah, he'll still be able to play the Hunter's Mark if he wants yeah. to really get rid of that Lothab. But uh, he has better options in hand anyway. And he's a face hunter, so it's not like it takes a lot of strategy to hit the guy in the face. Yeah, that Wolf Rider is a pretty good pickup. Uh, I believe he's going to the dome with. You could have might it might maybe could have traded the wolf for the the searing totem there, but uh, either play is fine actually, because shaman doesn't have any healing at all. You think about go going for the arcing golem as well. Oh. But that's quite a mistake because if you want to go for the horse go uh, the arcing golem, you should have traded the one one uh, doggy for the one one uh, uh, searing totem because now we can trade the one one searing totem with the wolf rider and the horse golem with the arcing golem. Yeah, and that takes all this pressure off the board. Now, granted, there is lethal next... Wait, no, he'd need to draw a, a cheap beast for there yeah. to be lethal. But, but... Uh, RDU needs to realize that there's a possibility of a kill command coming up, so he needs to clear all the beasts here uh, without taking any damage himself. And that's exactly what he's going to do here, and he's going to drop the oh my to God. create pressure. That so now, here. Nassan needs to top take either uh, an arcane shot, or uh, a beast here. Let's see what it top takes here. Uh, grabs a timber wolf, so there is that two damage. Yeah. And oh my god, Masan! The phase hunter power, just not enough in time uh, to put in front of all that damage. And the arcane golem even paying off last turn gets him right within range. A perfect lethal there for Masan. And that's one game win for the hunter. Can RDU come back for this? He led Hunter through, and that did cost him a game here. I don't think he's done with this just yet. Of course, this is a best of seven, keep in mind, so that Face Hunter is going to have to go a long way. Yeah, I mean, Face Hunter is actually even better uh, against Shaman than uh, the mid range version because they don't really have any uses of uh, their Hex in that matchup. So it's actually a really strong deck to play here. Well, we're going to have the next decks coming out, and it does look like, in response to the Face Hunter, RDU's bringing out his Miracle Rogue. Oh, really? That's oh. that's very surprising to me, actually, because I do believe he has a Warrior, right? He, he does, yeah. They both, both players brought Warrior. So, the Warrior is actually really good against Face Hunter, but maybe thinks that his Warrior is too late game based to make... I don't know. I think, yeah, that's probably the case. Because other, hmm. uh, otherwise you would play the the warrior for sure. Those yeah, especially if ghouls it's... and armor smith are just like too much for a face hunter. Yeah, you can throw down those early taunts, and then you also have like huge amounts of armor. The face hunter just loses too much tempo if they start hitting face too much. So yeah. I mean, RDU obviously knows what he's playing into. So we'll see what he goes for here. He drew a decent early hand. He does have that. Uh, Auctioneer in there if he needs it. He's gonna and coin out him. SI. Yeah, coin out SI here into Farseer next turn is the best play for sure. Uh, you want to start creating pressure on your opponent. You you don't want to just to throw shit at you. Uh, but we know that he has a bow here, so he can deal with that SI very very efficiently. All right, so nice bow turn, and in, in fact, the the bows and even like fiery war axes, if you're playing warriors, are so good against rogues. Uh, they have so many three health minions; it just lets you chunk through them very easily. Uh, it's a great turn three, but um, all right, walk me through playing the naked van cleave there. Okay, so the naked van cleave here is uh, to make uh, make the hunter waste his last uh, charge on the bow before he gets a trap. Uh, if he doesn't do that, then he will take, be taking two damage every turn. Oh, he got the Misha though. He got the mm, Misha, so that's, that's really good. Huge. And yeah, also, the... if he decides not to kill that and play a trap, you can trap check uh, the freezing with uh, a Van Cleef, and that's really really good. <clears throat> that you just played for three mana and didn't invest anything into. 
Yeah, no traps in Hassan's hand just yet. But when he turns his hand back over to RDU, what's he gonna go for? Let's see, he does, uh, he's got four mana, so... He's gonna the shiv, shiv and, yeah. and uh, hero power it's... here, unless he draws something good, but uh, no, did not, so it's hero power, and yep. taking four to the face. Takes four to the face, goes down to 24, but does clear the board, and next turn is the turn five, and because he did, uh, he has Lotheb in his hand, doesn't want to drop the Auctioneer because he has Conceal in his hand already too, so um, probably, a, is that a Drake turn or Lotheb next turn? Uh, it depends on, uh, okay, so he's playing a Knife Juggler here, and uh, let's see what he draws here, because this is pretty awkward. Uh, he wants to deal with that Knife Juggler for sure. Let's see if he draws something that he can combo the SI with. Um, and he's gonna top deck a... I think there's a little bit of a disconnect. Is it, is it actually disconnected? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he is. Uh, yeah, he got the bug where uh, the timer is going for your opponent, but he can't make any plays. He's not gonna draw any cards. It's, yeah, this is gonna be... Uh, this is gonna be a disconnect. He needs to uh, quit the game right now and try to reconnect into the game. I don't think he realizes that. Oh my god, this could actually be a little bit rough. Um, well, he's saying so many options to Masan, but he doesn't have any as long as he's just stuck here. I think he's yeah. expecting the game to just unfreeze for him, but he's stuck in a little bit of lag right now. Yeah, in ladder, um, you would definitely go out F4, but in tournament, like, you don't want to take the risk. Maybe it's not bugged, maybe it's just something going... But now he needs to realize that something is wrong, because now it's been more than 1 minute and 30 seconds. Um, so, yeah. And he's actually... actually bugged here. And this yeah, is and a... He's... This is a quite common bug as well. It happens a lot, and uh, I don't know. Blizzard should fix this ASAP because of stuff like this in tournaments. Yeah, he's actually missing his turn here too. The rope's gonna go down, and then actually what, give it. What is the ruling on this? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm actually gonna have to check with the admins here really quickly and see what's going on here to figure out. Yeah, I'm all restoring right. It. Yeah, apparently that is the ruling. It's just to go for the restart. Um, there's not a whole lot of good options or good ways to do this because you can argue that like you know one player is farther ahead than the other. Uh, it's only four turns in, and I don't think either player had a really concrete advantage. No, there was no advantage in that game. But uh, I mean, it's always awkward to restart. It, it's like some players get really tilted when they think they're really far ahead, um, and then they have to restart, and then they going on full tilt so that might affect something and yeah are we getting into the game or is it oh uh, well, i think rdu is gonna have to restart his uh restart his client just to lo load back in and okay. cancel that challenge so he should be back in here in just a minute um while we have this little bit of downtime i do want to for one last opportunity mention that there is a giveaway going on and you're just like oh my goodness giveaway how do i enter that and no it's not by typing exclamation exclamation mark giveaway or raffle or anything you just hit the follow button so it's as easy as that you can see it right down below the stream you hit the follow button and that will enter you to win one of two 20 euro blizzard cards so if you're looking to pick up some extra extra, you know, decks or cards for your decks in Hearthstone or just want to put it towards another Blizzard game, uh, hit the follow button right down below the screen and that'll give you the opportunity to uh, win one of those 20 euro uh, Blizzard cards and put that towards some awesome Blizzard stuff. So it's going to take us uh, just a second to get back into here, but it shouldn't actually take too long once RDU starts everything back up. But I'm glad that game wasn't any further um, progressed because that could have gotten a little bit dicey. But it does look like we are going to be starting here. And it is going to take about 20 seconds or so to get back in here. So we get a do-over. I guess that gives us a little bit more time to talk about the matchup. Um, I guess RDU had okay options. He drew into that um, uh, the Auctioneer Conceal combo that would have been really big turn 6. And he was about to hit that, but we never really got a chance to see that. Yeah, and uh, Masan's hand wasn't really that impressive. I think he had two kill commands in his hand and like an owl or something. Uh, not really any big minions that he could pressure RDU with at that point. So he might have been slightly behind here. So I don't think he's too sad about that reset. Although he doesn't know what RDU actually had in his hand. So he might have thought that he was ahead. 
All right, well, we are going to get back into the game. It's going to be a regame here of this set. It's uh, Hunter coming out versus RDU's Miracle Rogue. And actually, a relatively similar hand, but he draws that flare, and that's going to be huge here. The ability to flare a stealth to auctioneer is actually pretty big and with as many charge minions as Masan runs he might be able to deal with that on a turn where RDU doesn't want him to but he is most likely going to cycle that back into his deck yeah it's it's good but you don't want it in your starting hand for sure um you need to get it at the point in in the mid game where it's actually useful because right now you don't want to use it right now and then you don't want to have it in your starting hand so that's going back i'm very surprised to see the knife juggler getting uh thrown back here he's Going for a really greedy mulligan here for those uh, leper gnomes. Oh, and he picks up double bow here. Ooh, yeah, double bow. Not what you want to see in your opening hand by any means, but he does have oh. a tracking in there, so at least he'll be able to dig. Yeah. See what he goes for here. Yeah, but he's actually going to play the naked abusive sergeant. I do not like that play one bit. Uh, that's just going to get um, attacked with dagger and... Now that RDU knows that Masan is playing aggro, he knows that he will be keeping Farseers and stuff uh, for sure. So he's going to get full value from those Farseers because of yeah. that. Those Farseers are huge, not only because they force you to have a bow in hand to be able to deal with them, and I mean, Masan does, but uh, they're just going to put him out of that you know early burst range that uh, hunters want to hit. And I mean, the face hunter, it's it only has like about you know a 30 to 40 damage and just the ability to go to face so if you start healing up if you start like clearing the board too much kind of runs out of steam so RDU starting to get that down and we'll force Masan to waste the bow here yeah so th he's thinking here uh, you want to use the hero power this turn instead of equipping a new bow so he needs to track here for that last remaining mana and picks up a blue gill that's actually not mm. that good right now kill command is probably the better pick here because your opponent Wait, always he Wow. Oh, oh, Why that's... would... What minion in RDU's deck has two health? I don't know, but that's about that, it. That's it, yeah. Like, that expl that The only reason the explosive trap could possibly have been picked is to give him an extra charge on the bow. Yeah, but that's only three damage compared to the killer command, which is three to five damage. So, uh, that's a really weird choice there. I would not have done that. Yeah, I feel like both, either one of the other cards would have been better. Either the bluegill to get early pressure, or uh, just the the five damage kill command. And really, we were talking about those two earthen rings uh, in RDU's hand. They're just going to be even better now because there's one less kill command. Yeah, and uh, like we can see that the hunter is actually on the defensive here because uh, he the rogue has just too many heals. Like, uh, and he has no answer for that auctioneer except for hunter's mark and. Hopefully hitting a knife juggler with that uh, arcing golem. I think that's the only play you can go for here He's so I behind mean, that he needs to risk it Yeah, you, you could suicide the arcane golem But that that's horrible because you give your opponent that extra mana and you don't get anything off of it You I, lose the arcane golem for tempo and I think the play here is you hunt this market You play the knife juggler and you play the arcane golem and if it misses the auctioneer you trade with your uh, bow and go face Oh man, but if it misses, like that's horrible. You yeah. lose your last bow without the ability to recharge it with, with traps. It is, but he's so behind right now that he needs to gamble here. And he's gonna go for that play that I was talking about. Oh no, he's actually playing the storage buster instead of the golem. That's pretty bad. He gets the juggle, and that's Ooh. pretty optimal for him. But with the buzzard out there on the field, like that is so crucial for Masan. Like, I guess he figures that RDU is not really going to ever have too many minions out on the field. Yeah. To, for sure. to use the unleash. But the buzzard getting killed there by Fan of Knives is a pretty bad for Masan. Yeah, I think that you might have, like, the gamble is worth it. Uh, we knew that he had a SI agent, so he could get a deal with that Arcan Golem. But uh, I think in Masan's perspective, he needed to gamble there to maybe have a chance in this game. But now it's looking too grim right now for Masan. There's not many good options here at all. Mm. I think hero powering is definitely a good one of them. You can hero power knife juggler and drop another trap, but I, at that I th point... I think the play here is actually you hit steady shot and you explosive trap and you pass turn. And next turn when that is at 1 HP, you can play the knife juggler and hope that he hits uh, the knife on that... Uh, oh, he's thinking three. about hero or, or about uh, hunter's mark here. 
Yeah, but it's not I, I don't think that'd be very good. No, we yeah. need to save it for bigger minions. And uh, but he made a big mistake there, showing that he had uh, Hunter's, uh, Hunter's mark, mark in yeah. his hand by targeting that. It could have been an Arkin shot as well, though. Uh, but he he showed that he had some kind of uh, one zero to two mana cost uh, removal. Yeah, and I don't think that's a big mystery for RDU what it was, uh, regardless of the different options. He knows it's in his hand now, and that is mm, that's big information. He draws um, RDU will drop the Drake though. And this is a pretty big tempo swing. Now, RDU, crucially enough, hasn't drawn into his Auctioneer yet. And that means that, you know, Masan, he's not in super bad spot. But as far as, you know, being that big face hunter, actually, he draws a, he spins a Huffer off there, it, it, so... It did use a... Uh, juggled by uh, the Buzzard. Uh, but the, the Auctioneers is not really that good in this matchup, actually. Uh... Never have enough time to make a big cycling turn uh, with Auctioneer. So just mm -hmm. acid rakes and uh, three drop minions are enough. And well, there is that one health on that Azure Drake. If you get the juggle, then it's good to clear it out, but he's not going to have it this turn. So where does he bow? Uh, I think he's just going to clear the SI and oh, he's, he's suiciding Huffer. Wow. Into that is a big loss of tempo. Like, yeah. It, it's called Face Hunter for a reason. Like, you're supposed to, you know, just go super aggro, but clearing the board there actually still leaves it an RDU's advantage. Yeah, so he's, he's uh, opting to play the Van Cleef here before removing the Knife Dugger, and I think it's because he's so far ahead right now that nothing that he does will matter here. Uh, he hits Knife Dugger to the face again, which is really bad, but. I don't know. He, he's uh, got the ability to clear the board here if he wants to, but at the same time, face. yeah, you have to realize have lethal. you're in such a bad clock position. Like you're so far into the game that if you don't have you know a win in the next two to three turns, the the miracle is just gonna kill you. Yeah. So uh, he needs to go face here and hope and hope to top deck a Leroy. That's how he's gonna win this game. He can't trade here. If he trades, he loses. He has no more cards in his hand. And that's his last bow charge. So the last bow... I'm gonna go... I mean, he has to hit the, the Drake, yeah. So he hits the Drake. So he hits the Drake. Alright, so that's gonna happen. And everything yeah. else goes to face. He's actually gonna trade the Arcane Golem. That is... That's pretty rough. Because Ooh. now RDU... This is a big turn for him. He does have one Shadow Step. There's no Leroy in his deck for lethal or anything crazy like that. And there is the... Uh, he's going to sap, throw down a weapon, and then just hit him in the face with that Deadly Poison. Yeah. So if he top takes a Leroy here, that's 11, uh, 13 damage. 14 if the Knife Juggler hits. 15 if both hits. But uh, So he could have lethal this turn, but the uh, very, very unlikely scenario. All it right, and Wolf Rider. not enough. It's not enough damage. He's going to be able to hero power here, but like you said, that's going to be ten damage, and it will, he will be able to clear the uh, yeah. clear the Lotheb. He's actually one damage of lethal right now. Oh my god! Oh, and he picks up the blood mage. Oh, for the, way here. the blood mage, and that will give that eviscerate just enough damage. Five, and then. The auto attack with the uh, with the deadly poison gives him the three that RDU needs to beat Masan's Hunter. And beating Hunter means that you've overcome a deck that almost every other player in this tournament has opted to to ban. And so that means that RDU's ban of the the warlock is come get, like gets a lot more value because now he doesn't have to worry about playing against that. He keeps his Miracle Rogue and he'll be playing it now into what looks like Masan's um warrior. So Warrior versus Miracle Rogue, the next matchup in our third game, the best of three, or best of seven. Yeah. It's interesting to see him. I love this matchup. Uh, do you know if he's running uh, Harrison Jones? I believe he is. Yeah, uh, I think so. He too. is running Harrison Jones there. Oh, yeah, so. there it is, actually. Um, in his starting hand, he's keeping that. That's a pretty bad starting hand but he'll get the acolyte so at least he has a play in a couple turns yeah that you see is basically completely useless in this matchup you're never gonna get be able to play that uh, in this matchup but at Although, the same time that harrison is gonna be super useful later on 
It depends. Uh, I still haven't seen an Assassin's Blade from uh, RDU. I don't think he's running it. I'm not. I've stopped running it as well because in tournament everyone is playing Harrison Jones, and I hate that. So I'm not gonna get yeah. Harrison Jones anytime soon. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's just such a big tempo swing that even though it might be kind of rare, and you know, if you're just laddering um, in tournaments, you have to realize that's coming your way. So. A pretty late curve for Masad, so he doesn't have a lot of early game options. And like you said, the best that you can possibly hope for to get off of uh, the Harrison Zone, Harrison Jones is just going to be a couple cards. Yeah, so I'm I'm really interested about uh, RDU's build with Miracle. He's playing double Fan of Knives. He's playing double Farseer. He's playing Lothab. That means that he's playing no Cold Bloods. And I'm wondering what other card is that he cut. It might have been a Sap. Uh, so he maybe only runs one Sap here. Hmm, cutting a sap, especially versus Warrior, um, he does have the spell power that he needs to be able to kill the Acolyte in one turn, and more importantly, um, you know, only limit um, Asan to that one card draw. And he's actually yeah. choosing to hit him in the face with his weapon. Yeah, it's very important to hit him in the face at this turn, because he has two armor, that means he could armor up and shield slam, and he's preventing that right now by doing that play, which is a play that I do all the time. Uh, he picks up an armor smith here, not really the best... Uh, he needs to remove that Drake this turn, that's for sure. So he's gonna use the cool Taskmaster here. Alright, so Cruel Taskmaster clears the board, gets it out there. It's not an aggressive use, but it does help get him uh, at least momentum early on. Uh, it's not vulnerable to being cleared by just, you know, an auto attack, but here comes the miracle. He gets one draw off. He's gonna prep for another. Draws the Lotheb, but can't play it this turn. Uh, he will draw two off the Shiv, though, so a bunch of cards come in RDU's way. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be really surprised here if he Shadow Steps that auction. I don't he think will... that's, that's the play right now, because you have so many minions right now in your hand. You don't need to keep that auction here alive. you got to throw minions at him turn after turn after turn until he can't deal with it anymore. So no yeah. Shadow Steps, that's really, I like that play a lot. Yeah, he leaves it down there. So even if it dies, it forces some early removal. And like you said, he drew into way too many minions. He's got Lotheb next turn if he wants to play it and then go for like the Deadly Poison. But a nice silence on there is not going to take that Auctioneer off the board. No, it's definitely not. And now he's going to be able to trade that with the Armorsmith very, very efficiently. Uh, only giving the Warrior one armor. I would have liked to see uh, him armoring up instead of playing that Armorsmith and saving it for something like when you get your uh, Sludge Belcher out, or a Brawl, or something like that. Just, just throwing that out there to be traded with a 4-4 Auctioneer is really, really bad play, in my opinion. Uh, so there is the um, the Deadly Poison on. Is this a turn where you Harrison Jones... I, I mean, I don't think there's too many other options where you're going to get more value this, out of it. This is a Harrison Jones and a Fire War X turn. You remove the Auctioneer and you draw a card. Uh, you don't need a Taunt quite yet, and uh, you need to go for... Um, tempo advantage here to win this And that's game. exactly what that play gives him. It puts a big minion on the board. Now it is able to be cleared by the Van Cleef next turn, but he still has the Fiery War Axe, and there's no counter Harrison Jones in RDU's deck, of course. So uh, Lothab gonna come out here, just prevent a lot of that counter play, and go for the Eviscerate to clear it, which keeps Van Cleef on the board. Yeah, and this is the point where uh, you can just shadow step your Lothab every turn to prevent him from being able to remove your minions and that's really 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 strong. Uh, he has two shadow steps as well so he's gonna be able to trade that sludge bulger that's just played, uh, shadow step it, play an SI and replay that Lothab uh, and then trade the armor smith um, with the 4 4 rank clip and that's probably what we're gonna see here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so he is most definitely going to hit it with the uh, the Lotheb. Shadow stepping the Lotheb is really good too because it will prevent uh, any sort of like shield slams or executes from being played, uh, you know, cost effectively. So keeps him out of that, and it also heals it up a little bit too. But in actually, oh, this is a little bit weird. He chooses to use the Earthen Ring to actually heal the Lotheb instead of going for the Shadow Step. It's it's a fine play as well, uh, but you're. You're playing uh, more into Brawl right now, and we know that Amazon actually picked up a Brawl here, so I think my play would have been a better because you, you, you prevent the Brawl by Shadow Stepping the Lothab, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what RDU was thinking here, because that's the only way he can lose this game with a Brawl. 
Yeah, he picked up all those minions from the Miracle, and now he's just going to get them brawled away. Now, yeah. see what survives here. You don't know anymore the last minion that goes into a brawl. Oh, and it's actually low up, so you got really lucky there. It could have yeah. been really bad for uh, RDU. It was still pretty bad. Uh, he should have done the low of Shadows that played to play around that, but um, I think he's still clearly in the lead here this game. Oh, it picked right. up Leroy. Yeah, That's so really good. This is huge, especially with everything else just going to the face. Uh, Leroy, double shadow step in the hand, and he has a sap just in case he runs into something big like a sludge belcher coming out of the sun. Yeah, so he has, unless he top picks uh, some kind of eviscerate or something, he has 19 damage in hand, including the dagger, 6 on board, that's 25 damage. That's Masan's exact health, so unless. Uh, yeah, he's gonna. This is actually gonna be pretty deciding here. Yeah, it's and the, that SI. Yeah, the rag does hit the SI, which means that, oh my god, if he hadn't hit that SI, then it could have been lethal next turn. But it does clear the board. That's about the best he could hope for there from the rag. A lot of card draw, a lot of spell power, and that sap keeping the rag off the board can be replayed next turn. But once again, Leroy's double shadow step is in RDU's hand. So he has his win condition right there. He just has to get Masan in range. Yes, but uh, I don't... Oh, yeah, it, there's no other play. And it, you have to hope it hits the Drake. If it hits the Drake, you survive. And it hits the face, and that's... Uh, is that... 19, 20, 24 damage. It's one damage of lethal. Oh my gosh. So he's not going to be able to pick up the win this turn. Fan of Knives, unfortunately, does not hit the other guy in the face. Does draw into a Blade Flurry, but I, uh, yeah, that's not that. It gives him that one that, damage. That was but... uh, not the best play there uh, from uh, Mardu. I think he should have cycled first and then traded the the dragon with the Ragnaros. I mean, I don't yeah, know why I... he attacked before he cycled there. That was really sloppy play. Yeah, and he didn't trade that with the Ragnaros. It's gonna get faceless this turn. Yeah. And the Fiery War Axe even still clears that Thalnos. He would have had a taunt there. That would have been a problem for RDU, but uh, he did not have it, so it's gonna be lethal now, even if the board is clear. He has uh, 19 damage now. Oh, but it actually goes back over to RDU, and that just means it's Leroy all the way. Drops one, Shadow Step, and oh my god, the rag, it didn't hit where he wanted it to. And it just goes right back over to RDU. One Shadow Step after another, and he's going to have lethal here versus Masan's Warrior. Yeah, I do believe that RDU played uh, a bit sloppy this game, but uh, it turned out okay. If if Masan would have had a taunt there, uh, that Ragnaros and a taunt could actually have uh, lost RDU the game. Yeah, and there were actually a couple times, like when he overextended the board into Brawl too. He got very, yeah. very lucky with that one, as well. So yeah, if if uh if uh yeah for sure. I mean, he could have prevented that Brawl by shadow stepping, but it worked out in the end, and he picks up this win. I mean, there is a fair amount of you know skill that goes into this with your plays each and every turn, but when it comes down to that RNG, especially with the way the rags hit there at the end. Mm, just did not work out in Masan's favor. And RDU's Miracle Rogue comes up big again. And that means it's into what is, uh, I believe, our fourth game of the series. It'll be RDU up 3-1 to one over Masan. Masan picking up one win with his Hunter, but now it's RDU actually on game point. And, uh, what's, to... uh, what's Masan's last deck here? Masan's last deck is a... Um, it's a shaman. Yeah, it's shaman. So shaman, that's what okay. he's bringing out. Interesting. Uh, that matchup can go either way. I know a lot of people are saying that uh, Miracle is really favored in that matchup, but uh, those are just uh, really whiny kids, you know. Uh, that matchup is actually pretty, pretty 50 50, in my opinion. Right, especially against this version. Masan does run uh, double Argus's too. Yeah. So. But, however,. Uh, are the use running double fan of knives, so that can also be good against Shaman. So it's they both have good cards versus each other. So we'll see how this pans yeah, he's out. Got, he's got a deadly poison in his hand too, so that'll that's there for the fan combo uh, if he has to go for it. But already the board's starting to get developed by Masan, and oh, already you draws into Leroy, which is not going to be useful for a few turns. Yeah, that Leroy is a dead card right now. Uh, the Sap is not a really a good card against Shaman because they don't really have a lot of good Sap targets. 
he could make something happen with that sap if uh, he argues with something like uh, that Harrison Jones or something big. Then that sap could be useful, but otherwise it's, it's not really a good card in this matchup. Hi, and there comes the first Argus of the game. It's going to be more than effective. It does taunt up the uh, the Squire, and it also will get uh, the uh, Haunted Creeper, which is now a Taunted Creeper, uh, which is just going to get sapped. Yeah, um, it's getting sapped. As I said, there's no good sap target, so that's like a, a very a very decent one uh, to use a sap on. All right, but. He also goes for the clear of the Argus, so he wants to full clear the board. Uh, do you think that was the right play for the Eviscerate, or...? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you need to clear the board at all time against Chaman, especially when you know they're running double Arguses, so uh, it doesn't get Argus and trades up with the SI. So, now... we're, we're not seeing any Auctioneers yet, uh, so this can actually be pretty bad here for RDU. Definitely has that potential. Keep in mind, RDU, he wins this game and he wins $1,500. So, a lot on the line here for Masan's Shaman. So, my Shaman will be able to, uh, he'll clear the board once again and he'll still have that Doomhammer wailing away. That's a lot of damage and the Wolves are actually going to be pretty difficult to deal with. Just spamming taunts against RDU's Miracle. Yeah, uh, the low thumb is going to most likely be played here unless he picks up uh, no, I wouldn't even play an auctioneer if he picks that up. He picks up an Edwin. Um, I think you just go for the, the low thumb here. No, you actually used a dagger up poison and played Edwin here to deal those rolls first. Because if you play the low thumb, uh, there's a possibility of uh, flame tongue and a removal for that, so. Yeah, and even though you would get the, the value from playing Lothev from its battle cry, uh, having it gone the next turn is never what you want to see. So he clears out one wolf, he'll get the next one next turn. He does get a 6 6 fan cleave, which is no joke. It can trade out against a lot of things, but what is the answer? Oh, one turn too late there for the Alakir. Um, and so it's just going to be the Haunted Creeper into uh, head into the face. Yeah, uh, Dream actually went down some. Switching over right. to uh, the player streams here. Alright, well in the meantime, uh, he threw everything to the face and that means that, at least for RDU, this turn is going to be his Lotheb turn. He doesn't have any Shadow Steps yet for his Leroy and he still has to clear those taunts off the board. I'll do that with just a, uh, a quick uh, hero power auto attack and send it right back over to, um, to Masan. Hopefully... Yeah. So the the he has lethal here with the fire elemental top deck, and the, also the alaki would have been lethal, so that's over. All right, yeah. Well, things are actually down right now, so it's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, we'll see if we can get that, but yeah, with the lethal there, that is Masan actually able to take the win over RDU, who just couldn't get through the taunts in time. That fire elemental coming in right there at the end, and that means that it's time. For RDU. So RDU is going to grab a Warlock of his own. Keep in mind, he actually banned uh, this Warlock versus Masan. But now it has to take on his Shaman. Uh, is, is, I, I believe this is a Handlock for RDU. No, I think this is uh, Wait, Sue. I'm trying to remember what he played yesterday. Oh it, yeah, he was, was, he was in the Zoo Mirror. So yeah. this is Zoo versus Shaman. How does this work out? Because, I mean, Shaman tries to spam, but RDU spams minions too. Yeah, I mean this is uh this matchup depends a lot on the the, uh, the shaman drawing his lightning storms and stuff like that. But lightning storm, um, it's not really that good anymore uh, either in max because you have stuff like uh, egg, you have stuff like spiders, um, stuff that's really really sticky. So it's uh, I would say that it's a slight slight advantage to Sue. Uh, small advantage, and uh, already you actually drew a great starting hand too. He's got perfect curve, no matter how he wants to play it. And for for Masan, he actually has a lot of early removal too. He's got uh, things like Earth Shocks, uh, Rock Biters in there. He even has a Doom Hammer too, which is going to be really good to clear out weapons. Although that does still take the damage to the face. Yeah. So using the Rock Biter here of the Lightning Bolt, an obvious play because you don't want to overload yourself um, for next turn. Uh, however, the Spider here. It's gonna be pretty annoying, but because he could. Oh, he picked up. He picks up the spirit wolves here, and that's a very, mm -hmm. very pos possible play here. He could also gamble for a totem and hope it's either taunt or spell power. Um, 
but this is a better play in my opinion. Yeah, he definitely goes for the safe play there, puts the wolves out, and wolves are so annoying for um, uh, for uh, Zoo because you're gonna have to get through them. Usually there aren't a lot of options, but luckily enough, RU, RDU does have that um, squire in his hand, so he's able to just trade things out uh, at least very well early on. He'll be able to take it out next turn, as long as he doesn't lose too much pressure on the board. But there is that Earth Shock if Masan wants to use it. Yeah, I, I think uh, like the Earthshock is really awkward here because uh, if you use the Earthshock on the 1-2 uh, spider, you have to kill it with the wolf anyway. And that's so many damage wasted wasted on just removing it. So it's not going to go for that right now. It's going to go for Lightning Bolt at 2-1, which is not a good play either. So it's like making really awkward plays here, but needed plays yet. Yeah, now he does choose to at least kill off a spider there. The lightning bolt, mm, I hate missing that value, but at the same time, it does clear off the board. The problem is that RDU just had such a good starting hand. The wolf is out there. He was able to dish out this damage. It's ahead in damage right now in the race, but I don't know. This this is the kind of board I was talking about, about uh, by the way. If, even if he had a lightning storm here, the lightning storm wouldn't have been good. It would have left him with a... 4-4 four, four spider and two one one spiders and that's basically the same amount of damage um, so he's gonna go for the wolves here of course because he has nothing else to play but we know that he has a dark iron dwarf so he's gonna be able to trade up here uh, with the egg that's most likely there could also be a possibility here of uh, knife juggling the spiders here which is really good play as well yeah, Knife Juggler works so well with the Haunted Creeper. He's going to be able to not only clear out one of the wolves most likely, it's oh, one of the phase. Dennis, daggers. Okay, so oh, but he still has God. one more dagger hit there, so he could clear the board here if he's lucky. And he does oh, clear the board. Oh, he is. Oh my God, he gets the 4-4 four, four as well. So even though those daggers, Dennis, a little bit there towards the beginning, uh, he's still able to clear it out and does have that big Nerubian on the field. Yeah. So now it's looking really good for RDU. Uh, still hasn't gotten his lightning storm, so I believe his only play here is hexing that 4 4 and hoping to draw into the lightning storm soon. Otherwise, that, it's out. Yeah. Still leaves that knife juggler there on the field, which is going to mean a lot of extra damage next turn. Uh, you've got. Actually, he doesn't have wow. that many good cards to drop, so he draws into a mortal coil. Which is not what he's looking for. Yeah. Tries to tap there. I mean, he could have played the Shadow Sun Cleric on the Knife Juggler twice uh, to get it out of Lightning Storm range, but maybe then, uh, I don't know, it, it was kind of a decent play, actually. Then the He's... Shadow Sun Cleric would have died to Lightning Storm. Yeah, and so you would have lost, still lost those two cards to Lightning Storm, and really the two cards in Masan's deck that can come up so big in this matchup hasn't seen either one of them. And... Uh, he's just continue. He does get the taunt totem, which is about the best one he could have gotten here. But it's just gonna get traded out there with the spiders. And at this point, RDU is taking a trip to Value Town. Yeah. So now he's doing the play uh, that I was talking about uh, with double charge Sun. He's not playing around Lightning Storm anymore. He knows his opponent doesn't have it because he would have used it last turn if he had it. So he's just going face here with everything, playing everything he can. And as soon as he top decks a soul fire, this is game because even if he clears the board, he can't heal himself. Uh, so soul fire wins the game. Doom God wins the game most likely. And yeah, there is no lightning storm from Hassan. He's got minions to play on the field, but not a lot else. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, no, he does. Yeah, but uh, he, he does have a lightning if, bolt. If he, if he, even if he taunts this up, it's still lethal. Uh, the spider and the Argus and the lightning bolt still uh, will still uh, not be enough here. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh my god. So <laughs> little does Masan know there's just nothing he can do. The spider can come down there. He has, you know, spells from his hand to trade off against some of the creatures on the field, but once again, no lightning storm. His deck just forsook him there at his final hour. Not enough to get it taken down. So he'll play the Argus. It's gonna give him two taunts here. And even though, I mean, those are some of the best taunts that he could get up, you know, both with death rattles if he wants to play the spider down. Um, this is, oh, I guess he can't play the spider and taunt, so yeah, wait there, for the roll. This, this is so much over damage. There's nothing like Masan. Masan must realize this by now. He's just gonna go for the Doomhammer and the Honorable Sudoku into the Dark Iron Dwarf. 
<laughs> yeah, the Dark Iron Dwarf, or really anything he's just run into. And yeah, there we go. Four damage to the face. And RDU with a 4-2 victory over Masan.